Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And you might remember back in February, we ran across Darren at Machine Age Lamps, and he was looking for a nose bowl and a spinner so that he could replicate what he had done here for the Cubs at the Navions because he had a Grumman owner with, who wanted an Enterprise Orange nose bowl to mount in his uh, bar in his home and so he contacted me about getting the spinner and the other bits to make this happen now let's go on with the story so we would like to ask you please subscribe hit the like button and hit the notify to stay current with our content now we did a video a couple of weeks ago on machine age lamps and it was all because they were looking for a yankee nose bowl for a customer uh, to do a project for them and that kind of got us started doing that and the project basically revolves around taking a nose bowl and adding some bits to it taking a spinner again these do not have to be airworthy adding the rotating assembly and putting some lights on it and then they sell this product and it makes a great thing to hang on the side of your garage mahal or in your man cave or even in a hangar and you know they just want to make sure it's all authentic parts and so that got us started down the road of path that we're going to be trying to find a nose bolt now they wanted one if they could in enterprise orange because that's the color the yankee was so we started right here we started with the yankee nose bolt and by the way that t uh, is probably for the uh, tennessee volunteers down in you know where but anyway we also have this purple one and the spinner and some other bits now you may have noticed in their red and their yellow product that was rotating that if you looked in the inlet you could see rocker covers for the various engines one said franklin i couldn't read the other one but anyway in our nose bowl we're just going to have the bracket air filter screen guard down in the bottom the landing lights in the nose bowl a rocker cover on either side and then a spinner that is going to be part of the assembly along with a spinner back plate so we have a purple one and here we are looking at it you can see not a lot of body work has to be done to that one and then here's the orange one it's going to need a little attention they're going to have to buy the enterprise orange paint anyway and repaint it but this is what the orange one is starting at and again it does have the tennessee volunteer logo for tennessee university of tennessee right there and then we're going to be using chromed spinners or maybe even a painted spinner if the other guy wants his spin it and then we're going to be building a gate that looks a lot like the bracket air filter foam holder and we're going to be putting that down in the air box so you'll see something when you look through and then in addition to that we're taking these spinner back plates and you might remember those of you with an O235 and a spinner and no forward spinner bulkhead well this is what they look like on the back side here they are on the front side those are um, dynamic balance counterweights that we'll be removing but anyway we need the spinner back plates to hold the spinner because that's what's going to rotate then we're also going to be putting a landing light in there to fill the hole to make it look more authentic and with the landing light you need the landing light ring and the landing light spacer as well as a GE 4509 bulb and we actually actually have a couple spares that were on the shelf that nobody's going to be putting a 4509 in these days they're all going to be going with leds and then we actually took them and put them on the floor and the nice thing about having a tile floor with one square foot tiles is that you can lay this on the floor and then very quickly you can say oh okay so the crate's going to have to be two feet three inches by uh three feet and about two feet thick so now we know how big a box is to box up the nose bowl and pad it and all and get it ready for shipping so that takes care of the nose bowl and again we want to make sure nothing happens to this one because it's already in pretty good shape they're just going to scuff it up and then paint that one revolution red i have requested that my uh, assembly that they're going to be building be done in revolution red with a polished spinner and then here's the back plate the landing light ring the landing light and the rock um rocker covers uh, sitting on the floor to kind of give an idea for them now we're going to box all those up and put them together so that again when we ship these off to machine age lamps they'll have everything they need to make two of these one in the enterprise orange for the customer they already have as well as making an assembly up for me that we're going to be hanging in the hangar t11 at uh, hogan field so for those of you who attend the summer gathering 
I hope you'll be able to see it because I think it's going to look pretty good hanging up on the wall and rotating. So stay tuned as we talk more about the bits that we're putting in the box. Now we're using the Lycoming covers that were from the year 1969-1970. We also had available some of the Avco Lycoming ones that came later, but we're not going to be using those, keeping it all original. And these, by the way, are original Yankee nose bowls. So they have the curved endless. They're not the AA1C. They do have the landing light and normally a duct down there that goes to the bracket air filter that holds the insert. And then on the back side, you have a landing light mounting plate for putting in the landing light and be able to adjust its position so you can aim the landing light pretty much where you want. So these will have to go down and be cleaned up. This one will have to be have some body work done to it, but it will be all body worked on the front side. Then they will shoot it in uh, I'm sorry, in Enterprise Orange, which was one of the original Yankee colors, along with Revolution Red, Pilgrim White, and uh, Patriot Blue. And we'll be sending down a spinner. Now we're going to be sending down one for our project that's going to be polished up really nice. And for the other one, we're going to be sending down a blue spinner that you'll see here coming up later. That one is going to get um, stripped primed and then painted in uh, enterprise orange to make it all consistent for the guy so that's what it's going to look like if you could imagine a yankee nose bowl with all that spinning and as we saw from the teenager lamps website they make aviation stuff avionics can be turned to lamps desk lights and many years ago we took a control head for an autopilot simulator and here we are we stored it restored the wood restored the metal the instruments we left all original don't have anything to hook it up bought some little nylon feed for it at um, Home Depot and uh, needs to be dusted right here but then we put a treatment on all the wood to preserve it and we use the original wood so you can make aviation art out of a lot of different things so there's just a little couple things for you we I mean how many of us do we know who have propellers hanging on our wall somewhere so back in February those were our plans well here it is uh, June and uh, we have a brand new crate sitting on the floor of the hangar and it's very well wrapped and it's uh, very well constructed and now we're going to begin the process of taking it apart and getting everything out so we can go through the process of uh, figuring out how we're going to mount it in the hangar and then getting it mounted in the hangar. I would like to say this is a really nice piece of art. Um, I was impressed with the work that Darren did at Machine Age Lamps and um, so we were happy to help with this project and so we not only came up with enough for the customer who wanted the Enterprise Orange with his original end number and all on it, but we were going to go ahead and contribute another set uh, to have one made for our hangar. Now our total price on this was about $5,800. Um, you know, we bought the parts and we're including that in the cost and then there's the shipping which is uh, pretty substantial and then the construction that they do and it took a couple of months to get it all built and completed but anyway here's Luann and I and we're going through the process of getting it out of the box and I can see already one of my favorite packing materials was used peanuts hate peanuts they get everywhere so we're going to have to get some garbage bags and we're going to have to bag them up so they don't get all over the hangar um, I know shop monkey doesn't like them because they get on the floor and then the dogs come in and they want to eat and chase them but anyway coming out of the box we had all the spinner bits the spare light bulb a spare socket and they were all packaged very nicely even in the package we also had the spinner now the spinner was all wrapped in plastic and everything else and somewhere down in there is a nose bowl two light bulbs and some other assorted hardware but we're going to look at the U um, I'm sorry we're going to look at the OSB that was contained in the thing and this is a picture right here of the spiral lights are going to be two of them that go round and round um, actually serving as propeller blades on the rotating mechanism now Luann's can still we're still working on getting all of those out of there but we're going to use the OSB and that lumber that you saw that the crate was made out of and we're going to use that to construct something we want to attach this nose bowl where the wires cross that brace the hanger up on the uh, southwest uh, south sorry the southeast corner and so we're going to begin constructing that measurement and then we've already taken the measurements off the wall so we kind of know where we're going so here's a little bit of a time lapse of us just going ahead and doing all the construction and I'll be back in just a moment now our basic game plan here is the board that you see 
and the boards are going to go on the back side of the board and we're going to use eight Adele clamps and we're going to matter of fact we're using Adele clamps number seven and we're going to be using them to attach the board two on each of the legs making a cross where they contain the uh, cables that hang on the wall. So that's going to affix the board to the cable. Now the 2x3 lumber you see right there is going to go on the back side of the OSB and it's going to be screwed to the OSB from both sides. And then we're going to be able to put the lag bolt in. There are two 3 inch lag bolts that the is constructed into the nose bowl that there's a space for them to hang on and so we're going to put those in so that when we get the pegged in the board up on the wall then it's a simple matter of picking up the nose bowl and hanging the nose bowl on the pegs and then once the nose bowls on the pegs we can begin the process of putting the spinner on putting the lights and all in place and hooking up all the wiring so here's Matt right here doing one of the first fits of the nose bowl uh, on the wall. Now it's actually up on the wall here and uh, that was a good test fit and uh, we had to borrow the scissors lift from uh, Tom Hogan because this is not something you want to do. That crossing point is about 10 feet off the floor and that's not something you want to be up on a ladder and the nose bowl with all the rotating groups and all in it with the steel and all probably weighs about 60 pounds so it's not insubstantial as you can see Matt is working right here to get it onto the pegs and then once we've got it on the pegs well then it's a simple matter from there of going ahead and attaching all the other bits to it to get to the final assembly. Now we've been constructing this various video for the last couple of months so it may be a little bit out of order but anyway here we have the nose bowl finally it's up on the wall and it's a secure so now the final bits can go on to it that's going to be the spinner once the spinner is in place, then we can attach the two lighted propeller blades that go on it. Then we can also hook up the power. The power is going to be snaked down the cable and gone to an outlet and be put it on its own uh, sensor switch so we can turn it on and off remotely. But anyway, it's up on the wall now and then we're about to get it going. So stay tuned while we flip to the next frame here. So now the spinner is going on and um, again it's a normal spinner so we've got all 22 screws to put in it because we do have a forward bulkhead here no I'm sorry we've only got the 16 rear screws we don't have the six forward because it is a Yankee spinner sorry my bad but anyway here it is up and running on the wall and it looked pretty good so I was very happy with that result and then here it is much more closer and as you can see the cables running with the power down the side not too much of the board shows through it looks pretty good I actually want to add the tail and a rudder assembly on the other side of the wall outside so I can advertise Yankee aviation on a Yankee tail but now we've turned the power on and you see there's lamps above the rocker covers we have an incandescent landing light and then we have the spiral LED that go round and round and round so I'll let you look at this for just a second and I'll be right back with you so let me say it's been a fun project. I'm kind of glad somebody wanted to have a piece of machine age lamps art in their bar because that inspired me to help collect all the parts and get enough parts to have one made for me. Now, again, I did mention the price already. They are a little bit pricey, but they are, I think for me personally, they are well worth it. The Revolution Red finish on that nose bowl is outstanding. It's very close to a Ferrari Red. And then, of course, we had to find the spinner back plate and the spinner and all the other little bits. And, of course, staring at Machine Age lamps, took the rocker covers and mounted them on a backing, as well as all the hardware to hold the rotating group and mount the mounting point for that we can hang it easily on the wall. And then we also got the bits and pieces for the... Um, bracket air filter so that we have something in the inlet right there and as you see it turned out very nice I'm very pleased with the result I guess it was well worth all the detail and you might notice the little detail finally of the anti-chafe cloth tape is mounted all the way around the outside of the nose bowl I mean this literally looks like you could take it off and mount it on an airplane if you didn't have an engine in there it would probably fit look pretty good but it'd be interesting and not flyable needless to say
So ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased with the result of this and this is why we're showing you the video of this. Again, it's Machine Age Lamps. Um, I was speaking with Darren. Um, this is a Yankee that you could easily do the same thing for a cheetah. A tiger would actually be easier because you don't have the air inlet right there. And on the tiger, you could mimic what goes on when he does with some of the other lines where he takes a cylinder and cuts it in half and mounts it on the board. So when you look in through the upper air inlets, you see the side of a cylinder, which is something you're used to seeing. And I guess you could add a little bit of baffle and baffle seal to it for authenticity. So we hope you found all this useful and informative about a nose bowl art project. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. So we hope you enjoyed all of this. Thanks for watching.